If there are big cats, why are there no big dogs? Most biomes are dominated by big cats such as tigers, lions or jaguars. The tiger is the biggest cat on earth, the lion is considered the king of the jungle, and the jaguar is perhaps the most dangerous predator in the Amazon forest. All are known for their strength, tenacity and hunting techniques. When it comes to the word predators of the world, wild cats will never miss the list. While many cat species are feared in forests and other ecosystems due to their size and hunting prowess, dogs are rarely mentioned, although dogs and canines include wild dog species like wolves and foxes, big cats are larger, heavier and better able to hunt their prey. Most strong dog breeds are trained by humans, they are used to guard or hunt other animals. However, no dog breed does this naturally. On the other hand, cats have unique species that have developed and bred on their own, such as the tiger and the lion. So let's get back to our question. If there are big cats, why are there no big dogs? Because humans keep domesticated versions of both as pets, we commonly group cats and dogs together, but in reality, they are distinct species that have evolved to serve different ecological roles. Although both cats and dogs belong to the order Carnivora, their most recent common ancestor lived around 42 million years ago. There will always be bigger cats than dogs in an ecosystem with the same prey species. For example, Epicyon haydeni, the largest canid species ever known, pales in comparison to the saber-toothed tiger or the cave lion. Therefore, cats and dogs used to be much bigger than they are now. The essential thing to keep in mind is that the regions with the largest animal populations also tended to have the largest human populations, which led to the extinction of the large animals. For example, the lush forests of Europe, Asia and America have nearly been lacking of large wildlife, whereas dry regions like Africa have largely maintained their wildlife. But the truth remains that there have always been far larger cats in any place where a dog has existed, which is to say, pretty much everywhere in the previous 10 million years. Cats are larger than dogs in an identical habitat with an identical prey animals. The answer to that all goes down to one thing, hunting strategy. The single factor that determines the response to it is hunting technique. Big cats typically hunt by themselves and use a short burst of speed together with swipes from their claws to bring down their prey. Wild dogs hunt in a distinctive way, working together to chase prey over great distances until it passes out from exhaustion. In this type of endurance competition, having a bigger body is a disadvantage because it takes more energy to move it around and doesn't increase the chances of a kill. All of the large dog breeds that people keep as pets today were often developed by man through the mating of two different canine species. The original species, like wolves or dingoes, which still exist in the wild, are too small to overpower and topple great cats like lions or tigers. All of the giant cat species are distinct subspecies that naturally got bigger as a way of adapting to their environment's opportunities for hunting and survival needs. To understand exactly what I'm talking about, the timber wolf, the largest wolf, can weigh up to 160 pounds, 72 kilograms, while the Siberian tiger can weigh up to 660 pounds, 300 kilograms. Let's find out more about their hunting behavior and how do they hunt. Cats and dogs in the wild vary greatly when hunting their prey. Wolves and dogs are tenacious predators. Their bodies have evolved to consume less energy. All cats hunt alone, with the exception of lions. They search for food and rely exclusively on themselves to survive. Because they evolved to need to be able to hunt the largest animals, 
Tigers and lions are significantly larger than other felidae. Tigers hunt bears, large deer, and gaurs. Animals of this size are simply too large for any animal to successfully kill and carry off if they lack the necessary strength and size. Tigers may already appear enormous, yet no other species has strength comparable to that of tigers in relation to body weight. Tigers and lions have relatively bad stamina. They cannot hunt for hours or days. They need to rely on explosive power and camouflage or speed in case of tigers, or teamwork and coordination to feed the large pack, the lions. For example, females' hunting tactics would not work if they were the size of males. Wolves, on the other hand, are relatively lackluster as individuals. They are not flexible. They cannot climb trees or swim well. They have no claws and are unable to sneak as quietly as cats. They are weak, and even if they were strong, their body anatomically cannot exert that strength. Their superpower is their endurance, ability to outlast and outsmart the prey, and natural teamwork. Wolves can hunt prey for days, ripping at its flesh and exhausting it. They don't need to be 300 kilograms to hunt a rabbit. It would just complicate matters. People might think that lions and wolves are the same just because they work in packs, but one thing is often left unmentioned. Lions confront far more competition for food and mates than wolves, which explains why they must be extremely powerful. To have more prey to hunt, they must eliminate other predators. They must consistently fight other lions and assert dominance in their pack. They must be strong enough to take out the world's most lethal prey. African herbivores are far larger than on any other continent, and lions would likely be extinct if they didn't have their current size. Tigers, the world's second largest and second most powerful naturally occurring land predator, have one of the lowest rates of hunting success. The African wild dogs, on the other hand, are the most successful predators in the world in terms of success rates. They will most likely succeed in whatever they are hunting because of their ability to outlast their prey ten times over and run it into the ground, which is only possible because of their size. Even if the prey is faster, they only need to be fast enough to keep an eye on it because they will be able to maintain their speeds when it slows down. Now that we understand how things are, let's find out what happened to the largest canid that ever lived, the Epicyon. Epicyon is a massive prehistoric canid genus that was native to North America for approximately 15 million years and belongs to the Borophaganae subfamily. Epicyon was a true canid a member of the same family as wolves and modern dogs. Its largest species weighed between 200 and 300 pounds, 90 to 136 kilograms, making them the size of a full-grown human and more than twice the size of a modern wolf. It had enormous jaws and teeth, giving it the appearance of a large cat rather than a dog or wolf. The Epicyon quickly evolved from hunting small prey to larger animals, forcing them to compete with other larger species during the prehistoric period. Larger prey was scarce, but the Kennedy had plenty of smaller animals to eat. The Epicyon were known as the Bone Crushers because of their insanely strong jaws and specialized molars for crushing bone. However, there was soon insufficient prey for the Epicyon and other large predators, causing them to become extinct and allowing the smaller Canidae family to thrive. What do you think of today's video? If you liked it, you can tell us your opinion in the comments and give a like. Thanks! That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. Until next time, farewell.